Uh, didn't stay with uh, the Greens for your whole entire childhood, right? Uh, no, not my whole entire childhood. Okay, so you. I, I was speaking. Oh, go ahead. I was taken from them when I was eight. Okay. From the Greens. Taken by who? CPS. Okay, and do you do you know why? Now you were oh yeah. Why? Oh yeah. Um, be, severe neglect and abuse. Um, the night before, David beat the ever-loving crap out of me and left flash marks all over me, and it was kind of hard to sit down at school. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they called CPS then, and I didn't say anything, but, I mean, you can tell, and they just assumed and started taking pictures, and right. I went home, and later that night, they showed up. They yeah. took me, but they didn't take my brother. Okay. Um... And, uh, and so where did you go next, do you know? I went to stay with, uh, Christine Whitaker. Um, she was a foster mom in Defuniac. And I believe after that I was moved to Baker. And I was supposed to be adopted by Terry. Mm -hmm. That's Terry Davis, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. And, uh, then we found out she got cancer. Oh, wait, hold on. Before you explain who Terry Davis is and how she wound up uh, involved in your case, uh, she, uh, I guess, seen me or, or was. I can't even. I haven't even asked her about that to be honest. But all, all I know is uh, she was supposed to adopt me, and she came out to uh, the, the, the foster home I was in, and we met. And shortly after, um, on the weekends. I'd go with her, and it was it was awesome. I was I was super excited. Okay. And then we found out she got cancer. Okay. And uh, and then you lived in a series of different like, foster homes and group homes. The, well, uh, right after that, right after we found, well, they knew Terry and my caseworker knew um, that she had had cancer. I didn't know at the time. Uh, but during that time, we had went to, like, a, I call it an adopt-a-puppy day, where they do the foster kids and the, um, a, the future adoptive parents, you know, come out and they do uh, face painting and all kinds of stuff for the kids. Well, that's when I met the Thorntons. Okay. I, again, had no idea what was going on with Terry. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after, that's when they broke the news to me, and then... Right after that, Thorntons were involved in my life. Okay. And how was living with the Thorntons? Terrible. <laughs> I even told my case worker um, before they got, before she left me there, um, before the adoption was finalized, I'm like, do I really have to do this? I don't feel comfortable with these people. Okay. Was it just uncomfortable or, or something more? It was just, I don't know, just the, Kathy was just always so cold, you know? And I could just get, you know, you go, you, you live with a bunch of different people and different adults. You, you get to feel their vibes out. And I wasn't, I just, something was wrong. I could feel something was wrong. Okay. Now, you also wound up in, you know, you home for a while while you were in Florida. How did that come about? Oh, yeah. How did that come about? Um, this was when I was with the Thornton. Um, shortly after the adoption was finalized. Uh, of course, we still have problems. Uh, Lily was truck driving, and I was left with Kathy, and we started butting heads. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I can't even remember. She, I think she might have been drunk, but I told her I was going to go stay with my friend um, around the corner. Mm -hmm. And I guess he took that opportunity to say that I ran away, and that's when everything started. I was put in a runaway shelter over here in Pensacola, mm -hmm. and then for three years. Um, everything was either through Lakeview or FFN. And shortly after they put me in the group home, uh, Roy got his certification to be a private investigator. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Who, who got his certification to be a private investigator? Roy, my second adoptive father. Okay, all right, so go ahead. And, uh, I went to Oak House. Oh, gosh, I'm going to run a lot then. Okay, now you I know I you wound up in a pretty notorious, I don't know if it's called a group home, uh, you were pretty mistreated there. What, what was the name of that place, and, and how were you mistreated? Bell Point. Okay. That was one of them. Um, 
that's where he, he loved to leave me there. I was there for a year, and then I, see, I was there for a year, and then I got moved to a therapeutic foster home in Fort Walton Beach, and I was there for about three months, I believe, and then they put me back in Bell Point. Okay, now what, how is Bell Point notorious? What, what do you know about it? <laughs> From my experience, it was uh, all about control. You know, you couldn't have, you couldn't have friends, of course you couldn't have friends come over, but you couldn't go anywhere unless you were with everyone. You were on a point system, and it wasn't like you came in on the highest point and they just, you know, gave you the benefit of the doubt. You're on the lowest point. So right there from the get-go, you couldn't do nothing, you couldn't go anywhere, you couldn't go on outings, you couldn't use the phone, nothing. Mm -hmm. That, that doesn't help. Right. Um, and then they just, they, they just treat you like you're... Like you're a criminal, like you're just there for them to make money, you know? Right now, were, were you physically abused in any of these group homes? I wasn't physically abused in the group homes. I was physically abused by my adoptive parents. Okay, all right. So, and then you you have trouble, I don't know how to say the question, but it's, it's difficult for you to get identification now to explain what the deal is with that? Yes. Um, when I was adopted by the Greens, they never got my, well, first of all, they never got my, my own separate um, citizenship. Mm -hmm. When I was adopted by the Thorntons, they changed, of course, they changed the birth certificate because it's right there in court. They never changed my social. And again, never got my own citizenship. Mm -hmm. When I was put back in the system, I had to go under two different names. Mm -hmm. And they didn't add up. They didn't match up. And then um, when I turned 18, my caseworker at the time came by and told me, hey, your identity screwed up. We don't know what happened, but good luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, can, can you help me? <laughs> right. Oh, no, no, no. You're not a foster kid anymore. We can't do nothing. Okay. Were you only in one county in Florida, or had you moved to multiple counties in Florida? Multiple. Okay. Well, which counties do you remember staying in? Oh, uh, let's see. Dalton County, Santa Rosa County, Escambia County, Okaloosa County. Uh, gosh. I, I can't even remember the county, uh, Jacksonville. Okay. Okay. Anything else? And, uh, um, I. I need to get my file <laughs> to help with, help with the timeline. There's so much. Like, I've moved so much. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Last question. Uh, after we got active, do you think your case is an anomaly, or do you think Child Protective Services generally treats kids the way you were treated? So I genuinely think they do treat us the way they treated me because it's ridiculous, the amount of kids that... That, that want to go home and the parents want them to be there. But of course, CPS puts that block up right there. And then they tell the kids how terrible their parents were and the kids are, you know, of course, like, no, they weren't. It, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Okay. All right. I think we got